France has over 200 different indigenous wine grapes, but the funny thing is that most of us can only name a few. The Rhone Valley in the southeast of the country uses some pretty interesting varieties that most of us never get the chance to experience. And that's one of the reasons why I'm excited to share this latest weekly tasting with you. For this offering, we're going to taste some fun Rhone Valley wines made from grapes that you might not otherwise take a chance on. One white blend and one red. France's Rhone Valley has a winemaking history of almost 2,000 years. Romans first brought their wines up the Rhone River to trade with the local tribes. They even taught the Allobrogue people how to make wine from their own native varieties. After the fall of the Roman Empire, France became a monarchy and in the Middle Ages, a dynasty of dukes ruled over individual territories. And many of these dukes had direct ties to the Roman Catholic Church. And in the 14th century, the Pope relocated his papal court to the city of Avignon in the southern Rhone. Wealthy noblemen, royalty, and the clergy certainly had the means and the time to develop the land. So it makes sense that the local castles and abbeys soon had vineyards sprawling all around them. Dukes like Philip the Bold and popes like Clement V took their wine very seriously. In a show of local pride and a healthy dose of ego too, they often labeled their wines to let neighboring regions know exactly where they came from. So these symbols were a sort of territorial signal to the neighboring dukedoms and tribes meant to command respect, top dollar, and in some cases regulate which wines could or could not be sold in the region. Some of these insignias represent family crests, some are religious icons, and others, like this one here, have no real significance at all. So next time you pick up a bottle of Rhone Valley wine, take note of what's on it. These are all just fun little nods to the ancient elite and ecclesiastical history of the Rhone Valley. Enjoy. Spend enough time drinking French wine and pretty soon you're gonna to start to recognize some familiar words. Like this word here, cote. In French, the word cote means slopes or hills. And in the wine world, the hills are everything. Over several millennia of making wine, we've learned that hillsides, whether on a mountain or in a river valley, are the best location for growing grapes. Grapevines love lots of sunshine and dry roots. And hillsides, especially southern facing, get the most sun exposure, and when it rains, they drain quickly. Down in the shady valleys where the soil is fertile and wet, grapevines grow too many leaves and not enough fruit. And up on the hilltops, the temperature can be too cold for grapes to ripen. But on the slopes, the environment is often just right for growing grapes. And this is why you'll see in almost every winemaking region of the world, the highest quality and most expensive wines come from grapes that grow on the hillsides. Or, as they're known in France, the Côte. So we've discovered that the hills are alive with the taste of wine. The Rhone Valley in the southeast uses some pretty interesting grape varieties that most of us have probably never tasted before. For example, this wine. It has Grenache Blanc, Roussan, Viognier, and Claret in the blend. Now, Grenache may be familiar to you, but probably as a red grape. Blanc, or the white version, is a little bit more rare. Grenache Blanc makes wines that are rich and full-bodied with these sort of floral, perfumey notes. Roussan is named after the russet color of its skin, and is probably best known for its funky chamomile tea-like quality. Viognier is most famous in the Northern Rhone, where it makes some really thick, heady white wines. And Claret is a very acidic grape that's used to balance these rich wines out with some freshness. So this is a very creamy and nutty. Roussan tends to oxidize fast, so it gives the wine an almond, almost a marzipan kind of sensation. And of course, it's very floral and perfumed as we would expect from these grapes. So the wine is definitely dry and even slightly tannic too, which might come from some skin contact when the wine was made. Um, it's got a mouth-watering acidity to it, which I think is probably coming from that claret grape. It's very creamy and full-bodied, and predominantly has these uh, flavors of green melons. I guess uh, honeydew melon would come to mind. Well, this Rhone Valley White has a little bit of everything in here. It's zesty, yet it's full-bodied. It's nice and creamy and smooth. Very perfumed, too. Uh, I like it. It's a nice change of pace from the expected white wine profile. This red we have here is made up of three Rhone varieties, Grenache, Carignan and Syrah. Now Grenache is probably the most recognizable grape in this wine and that actually hails from Spain. But it's used to make these high alcohol red wines that are really strong in red cherry fruits and oftentimes described as tasting like candy. A Carignan is one that you may not know. The grape was once a major part of the wine industry in Algeria and it's used to boost alcohol, tannins and even color in these wines. 
And Syrah is another French staple. At 20% in this blend here, it's there just to add a touch of juiciness and that famous dark berry character. Ooh wee, that's uh, savory. It's like a bramble of berries and cassis. And there's this nutty chocolatey tone in there that I think is coming from the Carignan grape. It's definitely a dry and tart wine, and the mid-palate is full of that savory cassis that we were talking about, and the bittersweet chocolate too. Um, the finish is nice and spicy. It's got this black pepperiness to it that is definitely coming from the Syrah grape. I really like how this wine brings something different to the mix with those chocolatey notes coming from the Carignan grape. Um, it's got layers of complexity in there that makes this fun and somewhat cerebral to drink. Because both of the wines in this weekly tasting are a bit more full-bodied and really perfumed, we can go with some dishes that are a little more unique and bring some really strong flavors and textures to the mix. For the white blend, let's make a goat cheese stuffed chicken. The goat cheese is strong and rich with a fatty texture, so you'll want a wine that can lighten the load a bit with some freshness and acidity. The nutty, almost almond-like quality of the wine is a nice embellishment that'll actually complement the char of the chicken. And the herbs in the cheese will marry nicely with the herbal qualities of the Grenache Blanc and Roussan in this blend. For our red blend, let's try a potato gnocchi with wild boar. I love game meats, and wild boar has a lot of that earthy, rustic quality to it that'll really bring out the savory side of this wine. And the chocolatey complexity that comes from the Carignan grapes in this wine will make the savory qualities of this dish shine. As part of this weekly tasting, you'll find these recipes in your digital cellar where you can download and print to use for this tasting or anytime you choose. Here's to great pairings. Enjoy them in good health. Cheers.